our encounter of the podcast is Gotta Catch Em All. <laughs> and I wonder where that came from. <laughs> uh, please don't demonetize us. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh, that a drive- oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, that ship is still once you mentioned the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, a traveling circus troop has recently been attacked by an orc raiding or an orc raid, sorry, during their travels. During the attack, several of the troop's main attractions were killed. Uh, the ringmaster has requested that the characters search out a collection of monsters to help refill his show. As a DM, you can choose these monsters for yourself. A few we recommend an elephant, flying sword, uh, dryad, elemental, and a werebear, if you're brave enough, uh, a lion. Uh, the real challenge comes to when the characters are tasked when capturing the creatures who are sentient. Like they are essentially, yeah, uh, they are essentially hunting to enslave. By keeping the phrasing as beasts and monsters, uh, the characters are less likely to think of it as, or yeah, to less likely to think of it as servitude and enslavement. But you can use this as an opportunity to show that they have personality. He offers a special flute that indicates when they are weak. If you play it, it will put them to sleep, making them easier to capture. I like that. The flute <laughs> can cast the sleep spell 1d4 times a day. So, really cool. I like that. Actually, for that matter, I'm not sure a dryad can actually leave a certain amount of distance from her tree on top of that tool without dying. So <laughs> You take the whole tree then, buddy. You just Maybe that's one of the challenges. <laughs> oh, um, tree down kills it. <laughs> what? Really? No. I didn't know that. Early um, to do mythology, so. Oh, wow. Anywho, um, I'm looking at it. <laughs> this concept is very interesting because growing up, I always, I had never really considered the catching of Pokemon a big deal. But if you really think about it, you're basically catching creatures who are intelligent enough to understand human speech making them sentient and you are forcing them to serve you by and framing it as you want to be the very best and you're going to be my friend. Um, also, can we mention that you beat the snot out of them before you enslaved them too? Yeah. You? Like that's brutal. To, to near death actually. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I combined this with an idea that Ian had sent through when we were discussing this. And, um, I thought the idea was intriguing because, they're, if you start with the hunt with something easy, like, hey, there's a few things I need. Why don't you go get this for me and start with an elephant? And they're not going to think none of it because it's a beast of burden, right? Yep. Um, but, it, oh, get a flying sword. Oh, that's not – that's just uh, something imbued with magic. That's not a big deal. And then you continue to get, pick more monsters that are more and more sentient until you're hunting a werebear, which is essentially a person. Yep. Um, what do you guys think about this? I love moral ambiguity. Ah, That's great. Me too. A lot of layers to this, no question. Yeah. Mm. Um, and hopefully that 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 is something your players struggle with because that's the goal is to make this something that they struggle right. with. Now, some characters probably won't give two flips about it. Um, but if they're truly heroes, eventually as they've been doing this, it'll be it should become a problem. So mm-hmm. then who is the villain? Is it the guy who asked you to catch him or you who's actually doing the beating and enslaving? Um, or is it the orcs who caused the problem in the first place? But then again, now you're back to this weird question of is the traveling circus troop really all it's meant to be when they're enslaving things? So, you know, maybe you yeah. should just outroot that problem. Yeah. I don't know. That's so what, the point. So does the, the, the dryad in D&D die when you cut down her tree? Uh, not in fifth edition anyway. <laughs> okay. I'd say you can cut it out just like you're transplanting it, right? <laughs> just move it to the circus. We're just giving you a better view. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think that'll do it for our encounter of the podcast. Gotta catch them all. Hey, thank you so much for all your support and watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. We are the hosts of the Crit Academy, a Dungeons and Dragons discussion podcast. Be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button and be sure to ring that bell. Get our latest content as we toss it out there, and it's good stuff. Everyone loves fat loots and great D&D inspiration. Keep your blade sharp and spells prepared, heroes.